Yo! What's up? This is Patrick. This is Bank. And in this video, we're going to introduce you to Synapse Spark and then talk about all the different use cases. Stay tuned. <laughs> If you find this for the very first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date from all the videos from both Adam and this guy. All right, Vank, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day. But before we get into this, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? First of all, I wanted to say that you and Adam are doing a phenomenal job. I'm just honored to be here um, on your channel and talk about Spark. So I'm Vank, I'm part of the Synapse Customer Success Engineering team. My team actually works with our enterprise customers to deploy big data solutions on Synapse Spark and Azure HD Insights. So, so happy to be here and talk about Spark. I actually went out and kicked the tires a little bit, but I wasn't sure about some settings and, you know, these notebooks and PySpark. So I decided let's get somebody who really knows about this. So let's start by you telling us what actually is this Synapse Spark? First of all, Apache Spark is one of the important tools within the Hadoop ecosystem. It's an open source big data analytics engine, so to speak, that allows you to do ETL, machine learning, data science type of work. It works on a distributed architecture. And Synapse Spark is specifically the Apache Spark operating within Synapse. I think that's where I got stuck, Frank. I'm like, okay, I'm just about to spin this up, but I have all these other options in Synapse. Why would I use Spark? So uh, when you talk about big data, you're talking about distributed architecture because that's the way to be able to process a lot of data. I mean, we're talking about terabytes to petabytes. That's where Spark comes into the picture. It's an in-memory engine uh, on a distributed architecture where you can do your batch processing of your data, streaming, um, uh, your data science, machine learning type of workload. Large batches of big volumes of data. All right, that's it. That's interesting. So since you're here, you guys know how we like to do a guy in a cube. Instead of all this talking, let's head over to Vank's laptop. Sounds good. Let's do that. Before we talk about Spark, you know, obviously I'll go to my Synapse workspace, open my Synapse Studio. Before you write a single piece of PySpark or any code you want to write, go ahead and create an Apache Spark pool. Apache Spark pool is basically the engine against which you're going to submit your queries. It's very similar to like writing SQL queries again a SQL Server. On the left-hand side, we're going to have the Manage bar, and then I'll go to Apache Spark Pool, and then I'm going to go ahead and click Plus New. Creating a Spark Pool is as simple as a few steps where you give it a name, pick my node size. The node family is right now you only have memory optimized. There's some future options that's going to be available. Then you have the node size, then you have auto scale, and it's as simple as just setting these basic properties and just go ahead and click Review and Create. For the purposes of the demo, just like a cooking show, I have an existing cluster that I already configured, so we're going to switch over to that. So when I went to go and create my Spark pool, the first place I got stuck is what size do I choose? Because there was a list of them. I was like, should I start small? Should I go big? I wasn't sure. It really comes down to the data volumes, the complexity of the process that you're trying to run. If you're doing demos and stuff, you can start off with a small configuration. It really comes down to, hey, the number of cores and the amount of memory you want on each of your individual nodes. More data and more complexity, you know, go with a, a bigger node size. All right, and then, right, I saw that auto scale and I was excited about this auto scale, but then I was like, okay, I have this lower and this upper bound. What do I set? I mean, auto scale is just a way for Spark to kind of scale up the number of nodes on your cluster based on resource requirements like CPU and available memory. Upper bound is a way for you to govern your cost for your work. Lower bound is really, hey, what is the starting point? You don't want that lower bound to be too low where your jobs are suffering. So if I have a fixed workload, I probably don't need auto scale. But if I have a variable, let's sure. say it's a cyclical type of thing where, you know, I need more compute during this period of time, maybe I, I enable auto scale. Depends on the data volumes that are coming in. Sure. Yeah. All right. So that's great. So now what do we do with these Spark clusters once they're ready to go? The next thing we're going to do is we'll go ahead and create a notebook. The way you do that is in your Synapse Studio, on the left-hand side ribbon, there's an option for develop. And then we're going to go and click this plus sign to go create a notebook. And the first thing I do after I create the notebook is to go and attach it to a Spark pool. So in this case, I already have a Spark pool configured, so I'll go ahead and pick that. And now we're going to start writing some Spark code. For the demo today, we're actually going to leverage Azure open data sets, some public data sets that are available on Azure. In this case, I'm using a small data set called Public Holiday. Here, what I'm doing right now is just providing some connection information, like, hey, where is my storage account? What is my storage account name, app, and so on and so forth. I'm not actually doing anything. I'm just creating some video. 
available. The next thing is I'm actually going to instantiate my Spark application to establish a connection to the Azure Blob Store, or in this case, where my data is sitting. It's like when you're trying to connect to a SQL Server or your SQL pools, you, know, you have the server name and credentials and so on and so forth, and that's what we're doing here. Next step is we're going to actually go ahead and create a data frame. So in this case, we're actually going to make a reference to that public data set. In this case, the public holidays data. Data frame is just an in-memory table. I'm using a function here called spark.read.rk because the data is in the parquet format. If it was a CSV file, you would just use a function like spark.read.csv. Next thing I'm going to do is look at the sample data set. Look at the top five records, straightforward. Also, look at the schema. Relatively small data set, four or five columns. You know, that's as simple as writing some Spark code by pulling your data sitting in the other storage. Okay, Bank, you showed us how to create our Spark Pluses. Super excited, I know. What size? I know when to enable auto scale. But now, where am I going to go next with my Spark Cluster? With a modern big data analytics platform, uh, when you have to process a lot of the data, you actually bring the power of Spark to Synapse. And it's really uh, for your data engineering type of workloads where you're trying to do ETL, applying business logic, doing your transformations at scale to actually produce data sets that you know are ready for you to be consumed for your reporting tools and so on and so forth. All right, Vank, thank you so much for joining us. So guys, you know, if you have any questions, comments about Spark, when to use it, you know what to do, post it in the comments below. If it's your first time visiting a guy in the Cube channel, hit that subscribe button. If you like my video, give me a big thumbs up. As always, from Adam, Bank, and myself, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.